Great. Okay, well, here we are for the expert panel discussion session. And this is basically going to be a free-for-all. Um, you can throw any questions you like at our expert panel. And let me introduce them to you first of all. We have Michelle Leonard. Michelle runs um, her own professional genetic genealogy consultation company in Glasgow in Scotland. We have Donna Rutherford, who has set up that fantastic Facebook group, DNA Help for Genealogy UK. We have Debbie Kellett, who is an author of um, Cruise News, as well as several books. And we also have Martin McDowell, who is the Education Officer for the North of Ireland Family History Society. And there's lots of other experts in the audience as well. So we'll be, we'll be uh, talking to a variety of them as time goes on. So please give a warm uh, hand for our expert panel. Uh, Sean, did you have a comment or a question? I, I have a controversial question. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> uh, as as is in my nature. <laughs> and it's very simple. Is ancestry the way forward? Okay. Well, is ancestry the way forward? Ancestry DNA. Ancestry DNA. So who wants to take that question? I'm going to give it to, I'm going to give it to Martin because Martin did a presentation on this last year. So I would say that every DNA test is worthwhile doing. And I'm not against anyone testing with any company. In the ideal world, everyone should be testing with every company every time and doing every type of DNA test possible. So yes, obviously we can't. And um, what I think you have to be is strategic in terms of money and you have to be st uh, strategic in terms of who you're going to be testing. Uh, I have a problem with not getting segment done. Now, I love people testing Ancestry and I love contacting them and I love trying to get them to transfer to one of the other companies and then I'm able to use that information more. I do understand that a lot of people use them in common with links on, on, on Ancestry. I can't really do that. My top match on Ancestry is still what I said in my presentation last year, which is 63 centimorgans. And there's not much I can do with that. So I don't personally find an awful lot of use from the in common with facility because it only goes down to fourth to sixth cousins. I do have some good matches, they just don't happen to be over here. So while I find Ancestry very useful to find matches in other countries, I haven't found it particularly useful over here. I know others have, and everyone's going to have a different experience. So I would say, yes, it's definitely got a very major part in the future, but I don't think it's the be all and end all of everything that's come ahead. And I'm hoping that some of the other companies are going to introduce new tools that are going to give them an added advantage that is going to help things move forward in a different direction. Because I'm slightly concerned that everything now is moving towards health, and that's not my major focus. And I would like to see some of the companies remain totally focused on genealogy. Okay. Um, I think Dick Eastman had a very good mantra on his blog, um, which he said it was locks. Lots of copies keep stuff safe. Um, I don't think we can trust any single company to still be here in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years' time. If you think of something like MySpace, which was the big thing at one point, that suddenly disappeared. Genes reunited when I first, or Friends reunited when I first started, where we were all reuniting with old school friends. That disappeared. Um, anything could happen in the next 10, 20, 30 years. And the more we put our DNA into the different um, company databases, the more likely it is to survive in the long term. Um, and I think but at the moment, Ancestry do seem to be having, they, they do have the, the biggest market share, certainly for those of us with English Ancestry, um, I'm getting the best hits there. Um, but you also have to think about um, what's happened in the past. So they used to sell microbesome DNA tests and mitochondrial DNA tests. And um, they discontinued both of those tests. And all the people who tested there, including some people with whose, parents, whose um, uh, family members have passed away, those they, they got the results, but um, they, didn't have, they couldn't have access to the DNA samples. So, they, so there's a lot of lost data there. Um, so I think that's just something you really, people really need to bear in mind that nothing is going to last forever. Um, so get your DNA into all the available databases. I just have one small sure. point to add. Uh, so 
Um, if you're an adopter or a foundling or you're looking for um, family, then as of today, Ancestry is still the best place to test because of the size of the database. But I absolutely agree with everybody that spreading, getting your DNA to all the databases is really important. But it's, I would still encourage adopters and families to test at Ancestry today because of the size of the database. Yeah, I would echo all those points. It's going back to the, the old adage, fish in all the ponds. You just don't know where your best matches may choose to test. And it's important to be in all the ponds. But as Sean's point now, not everybody can afford to test directly at all of the companies. And especially not at the same time. So always look out for sales. And there are plenty of them through the year, DNA Day, Black Friday, etc. Build up your portfolio of tests over time. Um, start with Ancestry. I always encourage people to start there because you can then upload to Family Tree DNA, MyHeritage, GEDmatch, Living DNA, etc. Um, from that one test. And that gets you into all of those databases to start with. But I do think that it is helpful, especially if you have elderly relatives, to have them tested directly at uh, companies like Family Tree DNA where they will store the sample for 25 years uh, and things like that. As Debbie says, future proofing is very, very important. Um, at the end of the day though, Ancestry has the largest database by far and for the majority of us, we will find that we get the most um, useful matches there. But that isn't always the case for everyone as Martin has pointed out. Um, sticking with you, Michelle, um Martin mentioned that perhaps in the future some of the companies will develop new tools that might give them the edge. What new tools would you personally like to see available um, in the near future? In the near future? Hmm. There are so many things, it's hard to... And there are just little things like I would love to see what Martin was talking about today, the X chromosome, that's not available in my heritage. I'd just love to see that there. Um, simple things that could be done quickly. Um, I'd like to see more integration of clustering tools at the different websites. My heritage has a native one now, but what if we had that at Ancestry? What if we had that at 23andMe? I'd like to see better family tree facility at 23andMe. Um, I mean, these are things that I think are plausible in the short term. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know, what, what does the rest of you think? The thing I would like most at the moment is the ability to very quickly build a tree from your DNA matches. So all of those that have, ma have trees attached or have their DNA linked to a tree, um, that something will quickly build the tree so you don't have to sit there and build them yourself. I know, I know they can be quick, you, you, we call them a quick and dirty tree, we were quickly building up a tree for our matches to try and work out in the common ancestors. I'd like some tools to build that quicker. But actually Genetic Affairs has just started that, um, I'm not trying to advertise the Genetic Affairs, but they have started doing that. We, they will try and build that from the um, DNA matches and, and have that. So when you get your Genetic Affairs cluster, you also get some trees of where um, they've automatically found a common ancestor, so that's really helpful. But I'd like to see Ancestry incorporate clustering, like you said, and that automatically building trees. I'd like to see some sort of version of um, Ancestry's old DNA circles feature, because um, we know that if you have, um, say, third cousins and fourth cousins, some of those cousins are not going to be genetic matches to you, but they may actually match some of the other people you, that you match. So it would be really helpful to know if you've got, say, a, a third cousin who's tested, who's in your family tree, but who doesn't match you, um, but they may match someone else that you do match. Um, and also, it, it would be helpful just to know the proportion, so that it, you know, if you've got um, you know, a particular ancestral couple, and you would only expect to match, say, half the people who are fourth cousins, I'd like to know Know, if, if I'm getting the right proportions of, of cousins matching from that particular line. So you, you know, it, it may be something to look out for if you end up with all of your cousins matching on that line and you realise there's some sort of problem and you know, that may be to do with endogamy or something. 
um, you, but you would expect you know 50 percent of your fourth cousins to match rather than 100 percent so i'd like to see some way of uh, deploying the power of networks and these other matches that we can't really access at the moment who are part of that network because they don't match us and i want to see automated ancestor reconstruction we were promised that by my heritage in Oslo a couple of years ago. They seem to have quietly forgotten about that. They don't seem to be moving towards it at all. It's now they're moving in the direction of health. And I would like to see them focus back on that. I don't know how possible it is, but I would just love to see somebody come up with a tool that was enabling that to take place. The other thing I would like to see take place is uh, some type of full genome testing. I don't know enough about it. I don't know how much more useful it would be to us. I would love to see some of the companies about whether see what they could achieve and maybe try to get a market lead by going in that direction. I don't know if it's going to happen in the near future, but it's something that I would like to see. I would like to be able to play around with it and see if it did provide any real benefit or not. Well, I suppose the closest thing we have to um, that might be a super kit at yeah. Jedmatch. Yes. I mean, do you notice if there's a major difference between a super kit and an ordinary kit at Jedmatch? And for those of you who don't know, SuperKit is when you upload your data from Ancestry, MyHeritage, Family Tree DNA, and you amalgamate the whole thing together, and it gives you many, much more coverage of the uh, chromosomes than would normally be the case with just a single company. I haven't noticed it's made a significant difference in my matches, and maybe if they improve the algorithm, I don't know what can be done, I'm not... Techie, uh, I, I don't know exactly how they can do it, but I would love to see maybe some type of improvement in that direction, and maybe that's what your match will do in the future. No, I imagine it would cut out a lot of the false matches you might get with the smaller segments. Yes. But would it do anything else? I don't know. Don't I, know. I think it would just I would need to be led by the companies and just sort of mm. play around with it. But until we're in the position where it's available, I don't think we're going to really be able to sure. see exactly how useful that would be. And when you talk about ancestor reconstruction, you're talking about uh, it's the sort of like the Lazarus program, the thing that yes. Borland Genetics is doing, where yes. you can reconstruct your grandmother. Yes. And that gives, what's the advantage of doing that? Well, uh, I did a presentation a couple of years ago where I was able to show that I had reconstructed a sizable proportion of my great grandmother's DNA. Now, I was able to do that on JetMatch. Unfortunately, the tool is not properly working now. And what I was able to do at the time was I was able to then run her DNA through the database, and I was able to see who she was. And this was giving me really good results, and it was giving me higher symptom organs than what I was getting on any individual kit. So it was a real benefit, and it's just something that I think could really help people. Because if you can collect the segments that people have got in people alive today, and you can amalgamate them all together and identify them as belonging to one particular ancestor, then you're going to be able to make progress on that particular family line. And that's why we really like to see things move. Mm -hmm. Now, any questions from the audience? Can yeah. I just add? Yes, yes. Can I just add a couple of things? One of the things that I would like to see 23andMe do is to upgrade the mitochondrial to the file of 317, it's on 7 at the moment, which is the 2009 tree. And I checked with mine and looked at some of the raw data to see would the branch split out, and it would. So the actual mutation is in the raw data if they upgrade it, and I think that's a quick fix. But one of the things I'd like to see with, with sites is if there could be some added incentive in some sort of tools or benefits for people if they put in a little tree or put in some information into their ancestry in order to encourage people not to leave their sites blank. I mean, say how many of us genealogists find it frustrating? You look, the DNA test is there, there's nothing else there. There needs some incentive or something, or some extra tools or something that, and I, I, I'm very conscious that it can be a bit discriminatory towards people that are adopted and people that haven't got information to put up there. But if people did, then it might help those adoptees and families and, and that as well. So I think they need to do something to give incentive for people on their sites to actually add in some information and not just leave them. I think that's, so that's a couple of things. Mm. And the other thing I'd probably like to see is Family Tree to create an app for um, iPhones and, and iPads and stuff like that because for many testers they're all 
they haven't got PCs, but they do have that, and they can't look at their data because it's too difficult on Safari or on the web browser. So I think getting Family Tree DNA to provide an easy to view app. It doesn't have to be an editing one, but for people just to be able to look at all their matches quite easily on um, um, on a phone or when we were out having a chat, how easy it is to bring it up. So I think, and the other final thing is segments, um, a, a super kit on Family Tree DNA to be able to add if you've tested your other um, segments in there and create kind of a super kit on Family Tree DNA, I think it'd be very useful. That's a few ideas that good. I Good, 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 good. Um, Jared has a question over here. Thanks, Mark. Uh, it's really commenting on Sean's earlier question. You know, uh, in the last few weeks we had uh, 23 me lay off a bunch of staff because uh, their sales are plateauing and same for Ancestry. So, you know, their current model is certainly in the United States is reaching a certain level. So they'll have to change the business model. So I think the innovation will be in the business model. Um, if you, I, I bought a, a whole genome test for $199 mm -hmm. from Dante. Uh, and you know that's 3,000 times the number of steps of, of an equivalent price product in, an, in Ancestry. Uh, we, we talked about healthcare taking over. Well, the healthcare industry is worth $20 trillion. The Ancestry industry is worth maybe $2 million or something. So they, they have the resources to invest. So mm -hmm. and I, I think the movement is inevitable to happen in that area. I like the model of uh, Nebula genetics, where they will sequence a whole genome sequence, link it to a blockchain, and any time anyone uses it, you know who's using your genome. You own your genome, and if a researcher or a pharmacy company wants to use it, they pay you for it. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's going to be the change of this business model moving forward. Well, it's interesting the point you raise because there has been a slowdown in sales. And we've seen that uh, Ancestry, I think, in 2018, they sold about 3 million kits over the course of the year. Since the last update, which was January 2019 uh, to January 2020, they've only sold 1 million. Um, so there has been a, a, a slowing down in sales, and like you say, 23 and me have seen a similar slowdown as well. Do you think uh, this is going to continue? and that we are now reaching a plateau, and what do you think is the cause of that particular slowdown? Oh, well, all, all technology, every single technology we've experienced in the 20th century goes through an S-curve. We, we discussed this on, online. And, and it, this S-curve, you know, in, in our case, it lasts a decade. Mm -hmm. So we've plateaued. We, we've reached that plateau, and, and we need to change something. I, I think the next exponential growth will be uh, you know, free genomes, because they, the, the data is so valuable that the healthcare companies and so on and so forth will sponsor a free genome. Mm -hmm. Now, the challenge for the ancestry uh, industry, not ancestry DNA, but also then, is to use those whole genomes and make them useful to the mm -hmm. genealogy community. Because I, I'm sure within two years, they're probably going through the I'm just wondering to what extent, maybe James, you want to comment, um, to what extent is this market saturation? To what extent is it the concern about law enforcement, privacy, that type of thing? Um, I'd be interested in if you have a, an opinion about that and members of the panel as well. I suspect members of the panel would know more about that than me. I have noticed a slackening off in order. Mm -hmm. um, my project, my surname project, for reasons I've never understood, can't stop growing. But it, it, it can't go on forever. Yeah, yeah. But on the other hand, we've only tested less than half percent of the total population, so it's, uh, there's plenty of scope. But I do have a more specific question. Mm -hmm. I'm now finding people coming to my surname project that have been to 23andMe and have had SNPs identified by 23andMe, and quite low-level SNPs under my surname specific SNP. Um, now, are they just taking a random cut-off? In other words, not uniform. I suspect that's probably what it is. L55 is a fairly old SNP historically. Um, it's not some of the new SNPs have got very long names. So maybe it's a rather artificial thing. Mm. But should we be encouraging FT, uh, sorry, 23andMe 
to produce more SNPs in a, in a vertical sense? Yeah. Can anybody tell me why my SNP is being identified by 23andMe? Uh, to me, it's, it's amazing. It's lovely, but I don't understand why. That's a great question for the panel, whom I'm sure, oh, maybe Debbie does know the answer to this question. Uh, so on the Illumina chip, uh, the, co the companies can choose to add their own customized SNPs. So um, I think what um, 23 me have done is, is they've chosen their own customized SNPs for mitochondrial DNA and Y-DNA in order to give them a little bit more resolution. Quite how they've chosen those, I don't know, but I know some SNPs don't work very well on microarrays in the first place, so they've probably just taken a, a version of the tree and just selected a, a range of SNPs which they think are going to give people useful haplogroup group assignments. And how, how often do they upgrade them? Um, well, every time they produce a new chip. So uh, they moved to the global screening array, um, as, uh, as it has um, family tree DNA and my heritage have done the same. And we are also supposed to be seeing um, YSNP data coming from family tree DNA. They promised at their conference last year that everyone who'd taken the family finder test uh, direct with family tree DNA, they would have their results upgraded to include the Y-SNP and mitochondrial DNA SNP data. So I think that is actually going to be really, really beneficial for our surname projects. If people start getting the SNP data, then that means they will actually be able to participate in projects, and hopefully it will encourage them then to take other tests to see if they, uh, they match um, with the YSTRs. Because uh, uh, there's a huge potential with Y-DNA testing. We've got 20, you know, over 30 million people who've taken autosomal DNA tests. We've got 700,000 people in the family tree DNA database in our surname project. So we really need to try and exploit that um, you know, to, to encourage everyone to upgrade to do all the other tests as well. And what do you think of the slowdown in sales? Um, I think the slowdown at the moment is in America. Um, I think that it, I think it probably has reached the plateau in America. Um, I don't think any of the companies are really doing as much as they could do um, to promote um, their tests outside the US. Um, Ancestry probably have done quite a bit, certainly in the, the UK, of promoting their product. And my heritage have done a fairly good job in continental Europe. But there's a huge world out there, and Ancestry only sell their tests in you know, 35 countries around the world, 23 and me only sell their tests in. Um, it's about 50-something countries in the world, and there's hardly any active marketing in, you know, there's huge markets in India, which would be brilliant for all the families with um, you know, ancestors out in India, that's a complete untapped market. Um, Russia, another huge market, I mean, you know, family tree DNA, I've got Russians in some of my projects, and they're actually getting quite a few matches, and there's a lot of, it seems to be a lot of interest, in and um, I think we're being told we have to leave by the looks of it, so... No, we've got I 10 minutes think left. We've got 10 minutes. No? Yes, we do. We finish at 5. It's 2 minutes past 5. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and on that note, um, grand. Well, um, we'll end it there for today then. But uh, you see, time passes so quickly when you're doing something you enjoy. Um, there's lots more that we could talk about. We're going to have another little expert panel discussion meeting tomorrow. Um, so uh, all that remains for me to say is to say thank you to the expert panel. Thank you to you guys for attending today. And I look forward to seeing most of you again, hopefully tomorrow. Thanks very much. Yeah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>